Hello there, my fellow mainframers and computer performance analysts. At the time of this video, there is a WLM option known as the IO Priority Management option. Now, we recommend you turn this option off. Why? Well, one reason is because the option has outlived its usefulness. A bigger reason is that by having this option turned on, it could actually be doing more harm than good to the WLM management of your workloads. In this video, I will explain all of this and teach you a bit about ZOS and how it works. Hi there. I am Peter Enrico of Enterprise Performance Strategies. My team and I are here to help you get great workload performance while optimizing the usage of your system resources in the mainframe environment. Our education and our Pivotal software are geared towards helping you get better performance results and faster. We created the Mainframe Performance Channel to teach you how to do what we do. Now, if you're new here, click that subscribe button and any of the references I give in this video, I'll be sure to link in the references below. At the time of this video, there is a ZOS WM option titled IO Priority Management. This option can be set to either yes or no in your WLM service definition. As I mentioned in my introduction, this option has outlived its usefulness since it is targeted to solve a set of problems that no, no longer exist in the mainframe environments in the year 2020 and beyond. In addition to this, we recommend turning off IO priority management since the advancement of certain IO subsystem technologies, such as parallel access volumes, actually create a new set of problems for Workload Manager. Thus, we recommend it be turned off, mostly because having IO priority management enabled is probably hurting your workloads more than it's helping them. But before you disable the IO priority management um, option, let me explain the situation. Back in the 1990s, WLM introduced an optional set of policy adjustment algorithms known as IO priority management support. When turned on, a set of WLM algorithms are enabled to help meet goals by improving I.O. response time by intelligently managing the I.O. priorities in the ZOS operating system. Uh, in the ZOS operating system. Um, I.O. priority is really similar in concept to CPU dispatching priority, only it's the prioritization of the I.O.s from ZOS out to the I.O. subsystem. At its core, these I.O. priority management algorithms are geared towards reducing I.O. delays. In particular, they are geared towards reducing what is known as I.O.S. queue time for work missing their goals. As a quick reminder, listed here is the base formula for I.O. response time. Today, I.O. response time is the sum of four primary components of response time. First, there is connect time, which is the productive time of the I.O., and then the remaining times are delay times, and these remaining times are disconnect time, pen time, and I.O.S. queue time. The I.O. priority management algorithms that are the subject of this video target the reduction of I.O.S. queue time component of the I.O. response time. What causes IOS queue time is contention in the ZOS operating system when multiple units of work want to simultaneously do I.O. out to a logical volume. Traditionally, there's a control block known as the UCB, and there is one UCB control block for each logical volume. To do an I.O. out to a logical volume, a unit of work must own the UCB, and when multiple units of work want to do I.O. out to a logical volume, the other units of work get queued. It's this queuing that results in I.O.S. queue time delay, and the queuing is what needs to be prioritized. The basic WLM I.O. priority management algorithm is if work is missing its goal, and the biggest delay reason uh, is I.O. delay due to I.O.S. queue time, then WLM will adjust the I.O. priorities of the workloads to help meet the, goal, uh, help meet the missed goals. Um, this would not necessarily result in elimination of I.O.S. queue time, 
but hopefully when the work missing its goals will perform better, will perform better because it's getting a higher I.O. priority and will thus spend less time on the queue waiting for the I.O. to progress out to the I.O. subsystem. Now, for years, this algorithm worked great. And for years, we recommended that it be enabled. But this is no longer the case, and we now recommend it be disabled. But why? The reason is because I.O. priority management matters much less these days than it did years ago. The reason is, is because a single UCB is no longer a bottleneck to cause uh, work to miss its goal by accumulating I.O.S. queue time. Why? Because of something called parallel access volumes, also known as PAVs. At their core, PAVs allow IOs of multiple units of work to a logical volume uh, uh, to a logical volume to pro progress, progress out to the IO subsystem from ZOS. Eliminating IOS queue time was one of the key objectives of PAV design. In fact, when PAVs were first announced, the original design names were phantom UCBs and alias UCBs, but I guess IBM marketing thought these names were a bit too scary and settled on parallel access volumes. And as I said, today we call them PAVs. Now over the years, PAVs have evolved and have resulted in significant reductions and even elimination of iOS queue times. So now the big question, if PAVs dramatically reduced IOS queue times, then what harm is there in leaving IO priority management enabled? And the answer is, having IO priority management turned on in a PAV environment could cause poor WM management of IO intensive work assigned velocity goals. Shown here is the basic uh, WM velocity formula when IO priority management is turned off. Velocity is calculated as CPU using samples divided by CPU using samples plus CPU delay samples plus memory related delay samples. When IO priority management is enabled, the IO using and delay samples are included in the calculation, so WM can also consider these samples when adjusting the resources to meet goals. And listed here is the velocity calculation when WM IO priority management is turned on. As you can see here, IO using and delay samples are now included in the velocity calculation. I should point out that in the world of WLM, I.O. using samples are connect time, and I.O. delay samples uh, are a combination of pen time plus I.O.S. queue time. WM management of pen time is very limited, and pend is really rarely contributes much to the I.O. delay samples. The I.O. priority management algorithms are really geared towards reducing I.O. delays due to I.O.S. queue time. But with the advent of PAVs, IOS queue time has nearly been eliminated from all ZOS environments. What this means is, is that we would expect the IO delay sample component of the velocity calculation due to IOS queue time to be very, very small. Um, with little or no IO delay management is even, will even be possible. In other words, the IO priority management algorithms target a problem that is now very minor or not existing at all. However, the damage comes into play because when IO priority management is left on, it also means that the connect time is still included as the IO using samples in the formula. This means in the velocity calculation, we have potentially high IO using samples with very few, if any, IO delay samples to set them off. This usually results in a higher than expected velocity, which does not reflect the right behavior of the work for WLM to manage effectively. This in turn results in poor WLM management of these workloads. Or another way to think about it is, is we can get high using samples that make the velocities look much higher than the work is actually reflecting in behavior. For example, 
Let's take a look at a report, and the following report I will say is unique to our Pivoter product. So what we're looking at here is a Pivotal Report example that demonstrates when I.O. Priority Management is turned on versus when I.O. Priority Management is turned off. What we're looking at here is a double uh, Y-axis report. On the left-hand axis, we have the number of samples, and in this case, we're looking at CPU using and delay samples, I.O. using and delay samples, and this particular problem has no memory issues, so there's no memory samples being reported. On the right-hand axis, we are reporting the velocities achieved as well as the velocity goal, and we see up here that the velocity goal is a velocity goal of 90. So what's the issue going on here? What you notice is that you have some amount of CPU delay and CPU using samples, and of course we always want to try to solve our CPU delay samples. But in this particular case, notice that the I.O. using samples are so much larger than anything else, and notice that our I.O. delay samples, we just have a teeny bit of them that we're not really even noticing in the velocity calculation. Now what is the result? And the result is a set of velocities. I mentioned in my in the video that when you have IO priority management turned on that the velocity calculation includes the IO using and delay and the CPU using and delay and that's this upper line here and that is the velocity that's being used to manage this DB2 workload. But what the lower velocity value is here is what the velocity would have been had we disabled I.O. priority management. Because when we disable I.O. priority management, the, CP, the I.O. using and delay samples will not be included in the calculation. Notice that the achieved velocity when I.O. priority management is turned off is much lower. Doesn't mean the work is doing poorly. It just means that the I.O. using samples, which we can see here with lots of orange, are really dominating the, uh, the formula and causing higher than, not expected velocities, but higher than representative velocities of what the work is actually achieving. Or another way of putting it is, is the high I.O. using samples are masking the CPU delay samples down below. In this particular case, WM wants to achieve a velocity of 90. It's just about achieving a velocity of 90. So every, but WM thinks everything is great when in fact it's really the I.O. using samples that are causing WM not to help this workload, not because the workload isn't doing you know, great, but because the I, uh, it's, it's not helping the workload because the I.O. using is masking the problem. Real quickly, another example is here where we're looking at MQ. In this particular case, you can see here that the I.O. using samples are dominating the, uh, the formula, masking the I.O. delay samples. This is the lower velocity is what we would have been getting had WM not included I.O. using and delay samples and that WM would have been managing towards. In this particular case, we see we're achieving a very high velocity really super high, almost 100. So WM is never going to help this workload, and because this workload appears to be doing better than its goal value, WM can actually steal from the workload, which can actually hurt it by WM assigning a lower than we want CPU dispatching priority. By removing the I.O. using and delay samples from the calculation, WM will then use this lower velocity, and in this particular case, the goal would be missed, and WM would help this workload. WM will make sure that this workload is treated very well. I hope that made sense. Now to conclude. A common question we get when we recommend I.O. priority management be turned off is what I.O. priority will then be used? The answer is, is that the workloads are still assigned an I.O. priority, but now it's set to the same as the CPU dispatching priority. Regardless, any I.O. priority matters much less these days because parallel access volumes uh, dramatically reduce and even eliminate any I.O. queuing. Regardless, if you um, do disable the I.O. priority management uh, support in Workload Manager, please make sure you go out and reevaluate your velocity goals to make sure that they're still current. So, that's it from me. 
Peter and Rico of Enterprise Performance Strategies and Pivotor. Um, please click the like button if you learned something during this video and please consider hitting the subscribe button. Uh, once again, I want to thank all of my fellow mainframers and computer performance analysts for watching this video. Thank you and enjoy the day.